The bodies are stacking up. The violence is brutal. Barbed wire, steel chairs, baseball bats, anything and everything can be used as a weapon in these battles to unconsciousness. Flesh is pierced, and human blood runs down the bodies of the most uncontrollable fighters that were ever captured on video. Check out Wrestling's Bloodiest Wars, now playing. Welcome everyone to another edition of Wrestling's Bloodiest Wars. I am Joe Dombrowski, your host, and for the next hour, we will be bringing you some of the most violent, some of the most ruthless, some of the most intense combat ever seen in the history of professional wrestling. We're going to kick things off with some international flavor. In this installment, you're taking a look at Arrow Boy, a native of Tulancingo, Hidalgo, Mexico, an individual that's competed all over the world, Mexico, Japan, and certainly now here in the Wrestling's Bloodiest Wars arena. Uh, speaking to Arrow Boy earlier today through a translator, I know that he's very excited about this opportunity, but very nervous as well. Uh, he's been through his share of out-of-control situations, been through his share of no-rules combat, but certainly nothing, nothing compares you for what it's like here in Wrestling's Bloodiest Wars, as you see the fanfare from our fans here in attendance, the streamers they've thrown in the ring, a sign of respect and adulation. They're aware of this man's reputation. He is Arrow Boy. This man needs no introduction. The deathmatch drunkard, Danny Havoc, an individual, certainly, who will go down in Wrestling's Bloodiest Wars history for the amount of blood and body parts he's lost installment after installment. And you see similar respect for Havoc as well. Not used to seeing the streamers here in Wrestling's Bloodiest Wars. Arrow Boy bringing a little different dynamic here, but certainly the fans show their appreciation for Havoc as well. Havoc has earned it right in front of their eyes. And I'll be interested to see a bit of a, st a clash in styles in this matchup. For those that don't know Arrow Boy, his roots in Mexico, they are um, best known for the Lucha Libre style of wrestling, which is much more of a quicker pace, uh, much more of a science to it, and much more uh, high-flying as well. And certainly there are elements of that in what we've seen Kenny incorporate the Lucha Libre influence with the violent tendencies of wrestling's bloodiest wars, including this installment known as Body Count. Both men tie up. It's Havoc trying to send Arrow Boy into the ropes. Notice the ropes on that side are wrapped with barbed wire. Or And that side, wrapped with some sort of uh, bamboo, kendo stick-like substance. A lot of uh, dangerous implements of destruction throughout this ring, take down by Havoc. Pace quickens its advantage, Arrow Boy. Havoc sent to the outside. Nearly into the wire, now he goes through. Arrow Boy opens up with a drop kick, Havoc right through that wood board covered with barbed wire. That was one of the clean sides. You have barbed wire to the right, bamboo to the left, and certainly that board on the outside not feeling any better. And Arrow Boy through with a tope, hooks Havoc and drills him with a DDT. And the floor of this building, I guess it's best described as a deck hockey rink. There's no, no padding or protection at all. Havoc hit Skull first and Arrow Boy following through with more damage. And knee first, Havoc into those stairs impedes his progress very aggressively. But now Havoc sends the head of Arrow Boy in. Havoc walking very gingerly, walking with a limp. 
as he aggressively hurls that chair right into the masked skull of Arrow Boy. The mask, a legendary staple of wrestling south of the border. As Arrow Boy begins to open up, we'll talk about that mask more as this matchup goes on. Oh, but Danny Havoc won't remember it anyway. The impact of these shots echoing throughout this building. Just imagine how it feels inside Havoc's skull. And Havoc finds a shopping cart right into the right into the abdomen. And a steel trash can lid for good measure. Havoc looking to turn this thing around. Still not walking all that well after the damage done to the knee several moments ago. And Arrow Boy takes advantage. Havoc couldn't get the momentum he needed on that whip. Arrow Boy reverses. And Havoc's own idea comes back to bite him. Just sending that shopping cart straight into the head, the upper body of Havoc. Back into the ring. As we mentioned, that mask of Arrow Boy, symbolic. It's almost like a another identity. It's almost like a superhero uh, in, in Mexican culture. To lose that mask is the ultimate sign of shame and disrespect. Havoc for the cover after the drop kick gets to. I think Havoc is just looking to regroup right now. We've seen Havoc as a member of the Nation of Intoxication, a nine-year pro, six foot one, 190 pounds. And there you see Arrow Boy hits the barbed wire. And into the bamboo as well. Havoc in his element. Havoc, a native of Iowa, which doesn't strike many as the most hardcore of states, but hey, he's made it work. Been all over the world in his own right. Germany, Japan. Arrow Boy sent in. Scoops him up, tilt a roll backbreaker on the wood sticks, and only it's two. You can hear Arrow Boy writhing in pain. Arrow Boy, only in his mid 20s, he could trace his career back to his teens. We start him young south of the border. Arrow Boy gets the foot up. And drives down with the knees right around the jaw area. Hook of the leg finds two. And uh, shouldn't be too surprising. Arrow Boy has adjusted well. I believe uh, one of his claims to fame south of the border is being part of Los Ultra Violentos. And that speaks for itself. Havoc is dazed, but Havoc recovers. That bamboo stick drilled across the upper body, maybe caught him in the head. And Havoc looking for a receipt from the barbed wire board at the outset of this match. Arrow Boy just all he can to keep his balance on the ropes, let alone fight off Havoc now trying to get some shots in. You can see the blood on Havoc's back from his first landing. Could he meet a similar fate? Oh no! Jeez! Arrow Boy trailed into the barbed wire. You can see how sharp those barbs are sticking out. And Arrow Boy with cuts all along his arms already. You can just imagine the pin cushion. His back has to resemble. There's a good indication. Look at, look at the barbs, look at how sharp they are, look at how long they are. Imagine that digging, ripping, tearing at your flesh every time you try to move. They get stuck in deeper and further. Arrow Boy is sliced to pieces. We do have handlers here. 
who will clip this barbed wire if possible just for the safety of these stars so they can continue this match. Oh, but that is gruesome. And you can hear the gasps from the crowd as they see those deep lacerations, the blood trickling all over the place. This has got to be it. Have it. No! Arrow Boy survives, but how? And how much longer? What a way to make a first impression here in wrestling's bloodiest wars. Feel that impact. Havoc with the boot. Oh, Arrow Boy gets a running start. And don't smart. Havoc comes back with the clothesline hook and the leg chops. The shoulders only got two. One second away. So what you have to refer to as an upset in this environment. Behind Arrow Boy, he's earned a lot of respect in this match. Jeez! Metal sign between the eyes. Havoc is stunned. Second one. I think Havoc was out before his head hit the mat. But perhaps on instinct, perhaps on guts, perhaps on tenacity. Danny Havoc kicks out. And the crowd really split here between Arrow Boy as well as Danny Havoc. No clear cut home field advantage, so to speak, even with Arrow Boy being from outside the country. Watch Havoc now. Tornado DDT attempt. Arrow Boy puts on the brakes. Great sense of balance. Suplex as Havoc upside down. Not only is Havoc, but wait a second. Arrow Boy into the cover. Binds two. Not only does Havoc crack his back off of those bamboo sticks, but his body whiplashes off those tightly enforced ring ropes. Awkward landing, watch Arrow Boy! Swanton Bomb! Spreads out his body weight for maximum impact, but again, only a near fall. Man, what a match. And we're just getting started here. It's wrestling's bloodiest wars, and we're so happy you could join us. Puts the brakes on. I think. I think. What, Havoc was going for the Queen to Queen's level three, but Arrow Boy countered. Cross arm breaker. You can hyper extend an elbow. You can rip a shoulder. You can break an arm. Havoc knows that. He's reaching for salvation. He's reaching for whatever he can find. And finally, the hold broken. Havoc was in dire straits. That very easily could have been a tap out, especially this late in a contest like this. What floor sign? Well, what with blood graphs, suplex. Oh, imagine the back bending across that sign if he can get the suplex off. Oh no. Danny Havoc gets to it, no! Oh, Arrow Boy dropped abdomen first and then the Dragon Suplex to follow things up. Oh. And as if, in case you thought there wasn't the next level they could still climb to. Now a table absolutely consumed in barbed wire. I'm not sure if Arrow Boy has even realized the fate that in the hopes of Danny Havoc will soon await him. Barbed wire bat! I didn't even see that in the ring amongst all the clutter and plunder. Havoc. Oh no. 
Oh. Has that table at an angle and fate and Arrowboy forced to look right into his future and nowhere to move, no way to stop it. What a psych out. Oh no. It's that dragon suplex we just saw. If Havoc can get the fingers locked, if he can elevate Arrow Boy, this will be the last we see of Arrow Boy. Havoc went downstairs. Death Valley Driver! Variation of that General Order 24 and Havoc wins! Danny Havoc retains a hell of a reputation as one of the men to beat in wrestling's bloodiest wars. Arrow Boy, he traveled long and far for this opportunity as you see the sacrifice he made in order to prove himself, in order to give his all. And you can see his lower body still entangled in that lethal barbed wire. All the respect in the world goes out to you, Arrow Boy, my friend. You certainly proved a lot to all of us watching wrestling's bloodiest words. We hope to see a lot more of you in the months to come. And we certainly hope you get that barbed wire taken care of in a very precarious predicament that shows you the danger. Wrestling, sometimes it's a game of inches. You never know what could be at jeopardy. But Danny Havoc is the victor. Danny Havoc is the man in this installment. And by God, he earned it. But you want to talk about earning it? Arrow Boy earning a lot of respect. Wait a second. That's the bulldozer, Matt Tremont. Tremont's another one of those franchise players here in Wrestling's Bloodiest Wars. If these two guys ever get together, man, talk about a body count. Danny Havoc and Matt Tremont. One of wrestling's bloodiest stare-downs on wrestling's bloodiest wars. The body count continues to rise here on wrestling's bloodiest wars as our next one-on-one -on -one contest makes its way to the ring. In just a moment, you see the representation leading the way. His name is Dewey Donovan, and he represents Mr. Tofiga, six foot one, a man who's nearly 400 pounds of power under that garb. He's certainly dressed for all business though, set to carry out a mission on behalf of his representation. He's called the Samoan Tsunami. Samoan by blood, spent a lot of his time either born or raised or lived in Germany as well. Somebody with a reputation that goes all over the world. And you want to talk about worldwide reputations. So too does that describe the opponent. Masada is absolutely fearless. And whether it's here in the United States, whether it's been in Japan, anywhere in between, this young veteran has taken his life in his hands in the ring countless time after time. You can look at him and tell there's just a little bit there upstairs that's been knocked a little bit loose. And again, you see the screamers a showing of respect. Originally trained by Rudy Boy Gonzalez down in Texas. For those of you that don't know Rudy Boy, Rudy Boy used to uh, help head the Shawn Michaels Wrestling Training Academy. So that's a name a lot of people know, uh, no matter what your background is. So Masada was uh, certainly taught very well, and you don't survive people like Rudy Boy unless you're among the toughest of the tough. And Masada and Mr. Tofiga going to uh, have a war of attrition. One-on-one -on -one here in Wrestling's Bloodiest Wars. That's Tofiga opening up right away. Close line to the outside. After a series of headbutts, you don't want to headbutt a Samoan. That's uh, certainly a tried-and-true rule 
in wrestling circles, notoriously hard cranials. And notice the walk, notice the stance. So intimidating, so daunting, so meticulous. This may be the largest man we've seen in wrestling's bloodiest wars. And certainly, perhaps the most merciless. So calm, so cool, so collected. You can tell with Tofiga this is not about a grudge. This is not about an emotional rivalry. This to him is a job, it's a business. He's carrying out a mission to take care of Masada at the behest of his agent, for lack of a better term, Dewey Donovan. And he's out here to do just that. And let's not make any mistake, that is a great, great career strategy because you take out Masada, you make headlines, you get further career opportunities, you make a lot of money. If somebody can eliminate Masada, I want him on my show because there may be nobody. Tofiga's wedged a steel chair in between the second and top rope in that near right corner. And there you see the overwhelming power of Tofiga. Masada's body just bouncing off the steel. You can see Masada having problems moving and Masada turns things around and I don't care how hard your skull is, when you crack into a steel chair, it's gonna hurt like hell. But only a count of one. And that's the mission, that's the conundrum, that's the puzzle that Masada has to figure out right now. How do you beat this guy? How do you keep him down? How do you create a dent in that armor? And Tofiga just overpowers Masada. Series of shots, can Masada, can he elevate the big man? It'd be wishful thinking. Man, that was intense. I've never seen a man fall so fast or so hard from a basic rudimentary shoulder tap. But when you've got 400 pounds behind you, the simplest things can do so much damage. Check out Masada, smart maneuver. Masada was punching the bare feet of Tofiga, and then when he had Tofiga distracted, just made him wear a steel chair necktie. Masada, oh, that one-armed Irish whip's not gonna work when you're trying to move that much mass. But Masada sidesteps, smart maneuver. Jeez. Masada charging in, but his momentum worked against him, literally ran in to that tree branch of an arm. Only a count of one there as Masada kicks it. Masada, one of his signature maneuvers, the Death Valley driver called the Masada Miser. Yes, that's what it's called. I can't picture Masada being able to use that on Mr. Tofika. How will he adjust in an attempt to win this contest? Tofiga hovering over Masada. All the body weight. Crunching down. Not sure if he has a choke hold or a nerve hold. Either way, it's debilitating and Masada just beeled out of the corner. I don't think Tofika's expression has changed, nor has his demeanor since this match started. Tofika daring Masada to get back to his feet and fight further. And Masada looking for a, a respite on the outside, and that in itself is something I can't recall the last time I've seen. Well, maybe I spoke too soon. Not so much respite as equalizer. Ladder to the midsection. That's not the tallest ladder, but you don't need height for what Masada's using it for, and Tofiga sends it back into the skull. Those streamers that were thrown for Masada 
a few minutes ago now find themselves tangled in uh, a weapon that may lead to Masada's ultimate demise. I believe, Mas I believe Masada was the recipient of the head vice, a claw hold at first, and then Tofiga up to the next level by biting Masada as well. And again, this meticulous pace. It's not as breakneck, it's not as in your face, it's not as much of an adrenaline rush as what we're used to seeing, but I believe, oh yeah, the carnivorous Tofiga just opened up Masada. I'm not sure if maybe the latter had initiated the wound, and Tofiga had just dug in deeper with his hand or his teeth or whatever. But either way, damage done, and Masada the worst for wear. Masada into the ladder. And again, 400 pounds of pressure sending him in. That force, that velocity. But watch Masada adjust. Oh! Gosh, Samoan drop. Here's a cover. But only two. I mean, everything this guy does is intimidating. The Samoan Tsunami. And certainly, Masada, I'm not sure if he could have survived two of those. Masada sends Tofiga into the chair. And keep in mind, that's the chair Tofiga position at the outset of this match. Thank you for joining us here, courtesy of StonecutterWrestling.com. Where you can see so many more things like that. A knockout shot. It took three to take the big man down, but they're keeping him down. And Masada, food salt. Picture perfect accuracy. That ladder drilled into Dofiga. What did Masada take out of himself? But it was enough. I believe that ladder even hit the official in the face. Ultra violent beast is right. Masada victorious. The official is injured. Masada is injured. Tofiga came to collect body parts and get paid for it. He didn't get the win but he sure did a lot of damage, no question about it. But at the end of the day, Masada's the one victorious, Masada's the one who continues. That worldwide reputation, and now he's feeling no pain, that adrenaline of surviving. Pound for pound, perhaps the most dangerous and ruthless athlete in wrestling's bloodiest wars history. You earned this one, Masada. How do you do? And there you saw the battle scars as well. Masada comes out on top over Mr. Tofiga back to the drawing board to you, Dewey Donovan. We certainly have seen our largest body accounted for as part of wrestling's bloodiest war.
Panes of Glass Deathmatch. Your feature on wrestling's bloodiest wars. I am Joe Grouse bringing you what is destined to be perhaps what will go down as among the most infamous encounters in wrestling's bloodiest wars lore. You're taking a look at the Deej, DJI. About 280 pounds at least. Aficionados of wrestling's bloodiest wars will remember him for his violent bloodbath with Jake Crist of Ohio is for killers. This time around, he's taking on another member, perhaps the most unpredictable, unhinged member of that group. Ohio is for killers, OI4K. The Deej wields a lot of power, both in the ring and behind the scenes. A very influential individual and a very controversial one at that. But here's the wild card. Here's the X Factor. Here's among the most unhinged members of wrestling's bloodiest wars. This is relentless Ron Mathis, a member of Ohio is for Killers, along with Jake and Dave Chris the Irish Airborne. Mathis wasting no time letting his true feelings know. differential if I'm correct in my mental math as the bell sounds and the next time you hear that bell neither of these men I don't think will resemble the visual you see right now Imagine the mental state these men have to be in to compete in a panes of glass death match, let alone win. And not just against anybody. DJ Hyde, 6'5, 280. A mammoth of a man with so much power. Mathis, unpredictable, out of his mind. Mathis, I don't think, knows what Mathis will do next. And DJ Hyde and Ron Mathis wasting no time outside the ring. And you can just hear the strikes, the physicality. And that support beam that holds up this building. Obviously, that has no give. Mathis found out the hard way. So DJ Hyde brought this box to the ring. And much as I had suspected, the Deej brought his own accoutrements. Didn't get a chance to use that light to Listen to these shots. The side of the head, the ear. So physical. Mathis reaching for a chair. Oh. He's catching Mathis. Ah! That chair collapsed 
under Ron Mathis. These chairs are made to withstand several hundred pounds of pressure. People of all shapes and sizes to sit in them. With the velocity of Mathis's body. And the follow-up shot from DJ. The cracked vertebrae could have broken Mathis's elbow. And a slam on another stack of chairs. These men might not even need the panes of glass. Mathis. Reverberation off that impact. Felt by everybody here.